everybody, welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, I'll be hanging out with you today, and we are continuing on in our series about cell division. Our topic for the day is cell cycle regulation, got to control that cell division. So like always, we are going to get our objectives, then we are going to get going. There are four of them today, but it probably won't take that long. So first thing you got to know by the end of the video, explain how cells conduct quality control. Second thing is to explain the role of cyclin in cell cycle regulation. Third, describe the mechanisms that control cell growth. And finally, be able to relate cell cycle control to cancer. That's what we got. Let's go ahead and start talking. First topic is going to be quality control. So we talked about the cell cycle in our last video. This is a series of stages that a cell will go through during its life. And we talked about how G1 is where our cell is duplicating cytoplasm and organelles getting ready to divide. S phase is where DNA is duplicated. G2, we are continuing to grow, make more cytoplasm, make more organelles. And finally, M phase is where we divide. Now, you can see here on our little diagram that there's a series of little gates each one of these gates represents a checkpoint and those checkpoints are the cell's quality control system. So what happens is as our brand new cell here leaves M phase and cruises along through G1, when it gets to this phase right here, there are mechanisms inside the cell that do a little self check. And if everything is okay, the cell can proceed on through S and G2. If everything is not okay at this point, the cell is forced to leave the cell cycle and it goes into a phase called G0. G0 is a non-dividing phase where the cell will just kind of hang out until either things get straightened out, it's needed, or the body decides that it is time for that cell to go away. So G0 is a non-dividing phase. Most cells, if they make it through this G1 checkpoint, they are going to continue all the way through and actually divide. But there are two other checkpoints. There is one final checkpoint right here before it goes into mitosis and then after mitosis there's a little quality control for the new cell before it goes back into the cell cycle. So recognize that there is a big big checkpoint here at G1 and then another one before mitosis and right after mitosis. Now next thing that we're going to talk about is cyclin and the cell cycle. There are a lot of complex mechanisms that control whether a cell will actually divide or not. One of those things is cyclin. Cyclin is a protein that functions in, I don't know, the cell cycle, if you will. So we got a couple things. Let me note some things that we got going on here. There is CDK, which is a cyclin dependent kinase. CDK is always around. It is a protein, it hangs out in the body during the cell cycle, and it's just kind of there. It is inactive until it hooks up with cyclin. When CDK hooks up with cyclin, it causes some sort of progress in the cell cycle. So at this four, first piece right here, you've got SCDK binding up with S cyclin. When those two bind together, it tells the cell, all right, you have made it through G1 checkpoint, let's continue on into S phase. The <clears throat> cyclin goes away, it breaks down, it's no longer there for usage. CDK continues along until M cyclin comes along. When M cyclin comes along and is in high enough concentration, it binds with CDK and they form a complex called MPF, which is mitosis promoting factor and it's exactly what it sounds like. When MPF shows up in sufficient concentration in the cell, our cell enters mitosis. Once that cell enters mitosis, the CDK goes away and breaks down again, and our cyclin is free to continue circulating around and around and around. Over here, you can see a little graph. Um, this is showing a red line, showing you MPF activity. If you notice, it doesn't show up until that mitosis phase. CDK, blue line, is always there. Cyclin is kind of coming in along the way. So Big picture out of this, just recognize that when CDK and cyclin combine, they push the cell through to the next stage of the cell cycle. And in the end, when our cell is ready to divide and there is sufficient CDK to bind with cyclin, we get MPF, which pushes our cell through on into mitosis. Next of our topics we need to talk about is actual control or some of the mechanisms that control uh, cell division other than CDK and cyclin. So there are internal signals and there are external signals. An internal signal will be some sort of signal coming from within the cell that says, hey, hey, wait, wait, stop. Something's broken. Let's not divide. 
One of the big ones is <clears throat> connected to anaphase and kinetochores. If you look over here at our diagram, we have got our duplicated chromosome, got a chromatid, got a chromatid. Those chromatids are joined together at the central mirror. The kinetochore is the place where microtubules bind to our chromosome. So the kinetochore, microtubules bind here. It's like a little attachment place on our chromatids. It, as our cell progresses on through and gets ready to divide at anaphase, sorry to draw a line through it, but at anaphase, if the microtubules are not properly connected to the kinetochore, that is one internal signal that will shut down cell division. Um, at this point, cell division will shut down until things are sorted out, or if things can't be sorted out, then the cell will die. But recognize that's one internal signal other than the CDK cyclin thing that says, hey, we can't go on past this point. As far as external signals go, there are two that you need to be aware of. One of them is density dependence and growth factors. So our body is naturally set up to where cells will not grow over the top of each other in some weird hodgepodge pattern. They will usually only grow one cell layer thick. Once they are touching each other in the sides of a container, they will stop dividing. They'll keep dividing until they, you know, make one signal, single layer, as you can see in the blue cells on the top of the diagram there. But once they have filled out an area, their density is at a specific point, they will generally stop dividing. Now, there are growth factors. Growth factors are chemical signals that can cause cells to divide, and we'll talk about them in a second when we talk about cancer. But a growth factor, one of the ones that's well known is PDGAH or PDGF, that's platelet derived growth factor. PDGF can cause cells to divide beyond this density dependent point. So there are some chemicals that can cause cells to grow up over the top of each other, but left to their own, they will generally only want to grow one cell layer thick. There is also anchorage dependence where cells, normal, healthy cells, can only divide if they are connected to something. They can't just be floating around out in the bloodstream dividing all willy-nilly. So if they're not connected to anything, normal cells will not divide. Those would be two external signals to know density dependence and anchorage dependence. Now, sometimes things go, could go bad and you get loss of control, which leads to cancer. I titled it The Emperor of All Maladies there. Good book, by the way. Check it out. But it is the emperor of all maladies because to this date there are some cancers we can treat, some cancers we can cure, but overall cancer is this beast that we don't know how to deal with. Cancer occurs when the cell cycle breaks down in some cell in the body. So it could look like the cells are skipping checkpoints and they're just dividing and they got some broken DNA and every time they divide that broken DNA gets reproduced. Um, they may not be quality controlled along the way. Cancer is some form of the cell cycle run amok to where cells are dividing uncontrollably. They don't have density dependence, so they can grow up and over each other, forming tumors. They don't have anchorage dependence, so they can be off in the bloodstream, just kind of dividing as they will. Um, they can secrete their own growth factors, which will cause the cells around them to divide uncontrollably. They route all or they route blood vessels in the area towards themselves so that they kind of essentially cut surrounding tissue off from nutrients that are needed. Needless to say, cancer is a bad deal. Um, but it, realize that it does result from a breakdown in the cell cycle. Transformation is the process of a healthy cell becoming a cancer cell. So know that vo vocabulary word. And there are two types of tumors that I'm sure you've heard of. You've heard of benign and malignant. A benign tumor is a tumor that is harmless. It's a mass of cells that divided, but it is not cancerous, which means it's not spreading throughout the body. And it's probably not actively damaging tissue, or at least not doing so in a very serious manner. A malignant tumor is a cancerous tumor. It is possible that it could spread through the body. It is robbing local cells of nutrients. It's secreting growth factors. It's doing all kinds of nasty stuff like going through metastasis, which I have titled Devil on the Run because this is where cancer gets really nasty. Cancer may start out small, somewhere like in the skin. You could have a small melanoma that starts to grow and divide. As long as it's lo localized to the skin, it's not that big of a deal. But the problem with cancer cells is that they can break off and travel in the bloodstream and sit down somewhere else and grow into a whole new cancerous colony. So 
you a person will get skin cancer, but they may end up dying of lung cancer or brain cancer or blood cancer or bone cancer or something like that because those cells are metastasizing, which means that they are releasing from the original tumor, floating off to somewhere else, setting down and essentially creating a new cancerous colony. I hope that after this video you have a little better understanding of how the cell cycle is controlled and what happens when it is not controlled well. Thank you for hanging out with us. This has been the Web 207, the Lab, sorry, I think that's the second time I've done this. This has been the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite and hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you.